What a very busy and interesting WWDC this was. There's a ton of very cool things that were announced. ARM-based Macs, that's pretty interesting, but that's not what this video is about. We have iOS 14 right in front of me. I'm gonna show you my top five favorite features, along with a couple runners up of what they announced that we don't have yet or I can't test yet. So let's get started with the top five and then I'll show you a couple of other cool things. First thing we have here and the biggest change I think is the home screen. While it looks pretty similar to begin with, there are several changes that we can now do and really make this home screen yours. So right now this is how it comes. It's just a basic home screen, but the thing they want to improve is cleaning it up. So as you can see, I just have a bunch of random apps spread across all of these screens. I literally just downloaded every single app I could find from the app store to make this a mess like it was. So what they want you to do is disable pages of apps you don't care about. And the way you do this is we enter into our edit home screen mode and we have a couple of new options. We have done, as always, we have a plus, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then we can tap right down here. And this takes you into your page editor. From here, we can disable pages. We do not want any more, so I disabled the last two. If I click done, we can now only see the first two. There's only two pages. The rest of those apps no longer exist on the home screen. The only way to access them now is through something called the app library. To access the app library, you go to your very last page and then you swipe over one more time. And this will show you all of your apps put together in categorical folders. So we have suggestions, recently added, utilities, entertainment, creativity, productivity, games, social, reference and reading, health and fitness, other and lifestyle. All of your apps are grouped into some sort of folder. Now you can tap app library up here. You can search for them or we can scroll through and we can find our app we want right there. But the real point of the app library is to eliminate any of the apps you don't need on your home screen. I have a lot of those and I think you do as well. You keep the basics of what you really need, which you use all the time on your first couple of pages. And then whenever you need something else, you swipe over. It'll try to suggest what you may want. It'll show you what you got recently. And then you can pick through your folders and open up what you want. Once you're in the library, you can tap on any of these app icons to open up that app. If you want to open up the entire folder itself, you can tap on the smaller icon and you can still perform your 3D touches as you normally would. If you have something like My Creativity that only has four things in it, you can't open it any bigger because there's only four things. You actually have to tap on these four small icons in order to expand that folder. A little weird, but not too bad. On top of that, we do have new widgets. As you can see, it is very cool looking and there is a lot of different things that we can do with this. This still has the same widgets you had previously in your today view. They look a little bit different and you can change sizes, which is pretty awesome. You can tap and hold on one of these to enter into your editing mode as you would a 3D touch on an app. Some apps, but not all, have the edit functionality. This one allows you to select your location. If we scroll to the bottom though, we do have nothing. There's no way to add your widgets anymore like you previously were able to do. So it's a little counterintuitive, but we tap and hold on it and we say edit home screen. Technically this page is now a home screen apparently. If you want to tap on them there, you can also edit your settings. But to add your widget, you click the plus button up top. Up top, you will see some previews of suggested ones and then down below, you'll see all the apps with supported widgets. If we tap weather, we can scroll through and choose how we want it to look. There's different sizes you can do. You cannot resize them after you've added them, but you can choose the size when you do add them. So we have our small, we have our wide, and we have our very big. And we can go ahead and add whatever we want. I'm gonna add a series suggestions. We can choose like our shape again. I'll add this one. And then now we have it up at the top. We can tap and drag to rearrange just how you normally would and we're done. But the very cool thing now is that we can also edit our home screen, click that plus button again, and we can now add that to our home screen, just like an app. They also showed off picture in picture. I'm not gonna go in depth into that, but it's a pretty cool thing. We had that somewhat on the iPad, somewhat on the Mac. Now it's really on iOS and it works pretty nicely. You can go to any of the app you want 
And if the app supports it, your video will stay up on top. You can even minimize that and pin it to the side, which is pretty cool. We also have something called Translate. This is pretty much Apple's version of Google Translate. And I have to say it's pretty cool. And I really like the, some of the stuff you can do with it. We can enter text and type as we normally would. You can dictate it just as you would expect. But the cool thing is the conversation mode and some of the technology that Apple's using behind it. You can download all these languages offline and it's more of a conversation tool, which is pretty cool. So if we take this and we turn it sideways, we can now enter conversation mode. So this will allow you to cock back and forth and it's automatically going to detect what language it is so you don't have to change any of these settings. So just a quick example, they showed this in the keynote. What time does your store close? And then it will show the person the translation. And then if that person were to talk back to you, nuestra tienda cierra en 15 minutos. And then it will show that to you. So I didn't change anything. I just changed languages myself and it figured it out. So you can have this back and forth conversation. There's really nothing exciting or groundbreaking about this, but it's cool that Apple is taking on translation. I think they're gonna do a pretty good job with that. Another change I'm pretty excited about is Siri. They are doing a lot this year with not taking up the entire screen. They're doing this with calls. It's now a notification that comes in at the top rather than taking away your whole screen. And they're doing the same thing with Siri. If we go ahead and activate it, we can see what it looks like now. Open Safari. What time is it in Iowa? It's 4.09 p.m. in Des Moines, Iowa. So as you can see, we have this little bubble down at the bottom that shows when you're talking. It does not show you anymore what you're saying. But then when you do ask for something that needs to show you, it shows up in a notification like this. One thing I wanted to bring up really quickly while I had this open is that when I am activating Siri, there is a little dot up in the top corner right there. This means that something is using my camera or my microphone. A new part of their security initiatives to make this more of a safe device, it lets you know when something is actively being used, which is pretty cool. And the final thing that I think is pretty noteworthy is messages. There's a lot of improvements and I, this isn't my actual phone, so I don't have all the messages to show you, but I'll show you what they did. So basically you can pin messages now at the top, which is pretty cool. You don't get them lost in the list of all the messages. There's a ton of really cool animations. It shows you when someone's typing and there's a lot of improvements when it comes to group messages. The group messages can now be renamed and you can change your image. You can do inline replies to a specific person. You can mention a specific person so you only get notifications if you've been mentioned. There's a lot of stuff to help manage that, which I think is pretty cool if you're into group messaging. Beyond that, there's a couple of other smaller tweaks. The keyboard dictation is now using the same neural engine as Siri, so it should be much more accurate and faster. This is all being done on the phone itself rather than externally on a server. So again, that should be better and more improved. We also have other things like maps. There is tons of changes there. Biking got a lot of changes and it's really interesting. Some of the stuff you can do with bikes now, it shows you your elevation. It tells you if you need to take your bike upstairs to get somewhere. And there's even EV route planning. This is pretty cool. If you have an electric vehicle, it will show you the stops you need to make and for how long in order to charge your vehicle to reach your destination. This is something I use on my Tesla. It's already built into the Tesla car, not something in an app right now. But right now they're working with BMW and Ford to get that rolled out. Nothing for Tesla, no plans for that, but it's something I've already come to expect and use on my car. So it's kind of cool seeing that they're gonna have something similar to that. Speaking of cars, we've got CarPlay updates. We can change our wallpaper, which is pretty cool. And we also have the ability to unlock your car with your phone. This is a interesting change because it's not really gonna be utilized much. It has to be used on brand new cars that really have the functionality built in. They showed this on a BMW 5 Series that's coming out next month. That's going to be the only car that's going to support this. And the way it works is it uses NFC on your phone. It has a card in the Apple wallet that you use to unlock your car. You place it on the door and then you authenticate on the wireless charger. 
Eventually, they plan on rolling out their ultra wideband chip functionality, allowing you to keep your phone in your pocket, allowing passive entry without having to physically pull out and tap NFC. That's not out yet, but coming soon to iOS 13 is the same car unlock capability. So if somehow your car will have this feature, you will begin this sooner rather than later. In fact, in the next couple of weeks or months, possibly not until the fall. They only offer this on BMWs right now, and they are making this open source to other car manufacturers that want to do this. Again, you have to be having a brand new car really in order to do this. My Tesla has passive entry with Bluetooth, meaning I don't even have to pull my phone out. So it's already ahead in terms of unlocking your car when it comes to phone use compared to Apple. But eventually Apple will have passive entry, but for now you do have to pull out and authenticate with NFC. So there you go. Those are a couple of the new changes in iOS 13 that are pretty interesting and noteworthy. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know if you found anything or you want me to check out. I've heard talk about setting a default browser and email client now. That could be pretty interesting. I have not seen that yet, but supposedly it is in here somewhere. But anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you for watching as always. This is Mark Fat Tech and I will see you in the next one.